Um, you know, at the end of the day, like, that's what the game is about. We're dealing with a monetary network here, and the monetary network needs you to allocate to the monetary network. It's as simple as that. You have to allocate to the monetary network in order to hold that value and gain that value. Because you can feel that once you've got this true finality and this true scarcity, it feels like you can actually protect the value of the energy that your soul wants to put into the world. Because up until now, you haven't had the ability to do that. You work, you create value, cool people appreciate it. You know, they give you some currency for it. That currency gets devalued. You put it into real estate. You know, the current, there's more money printing than the price of real estate going up. You put it into stocks, the same shit. Like, so there's, there's never been any money on earth that actually creates meaning. Bitcoin is money that creates meaning and allows meaning to happen. Everything else is just frivolous bullshit. I want you to focus here and I want you to think about a 1% allocation in Bitcoin. I think a 1% allocation is pretty reasonable and the impacts of a 1% allocation are absolutely nuts. If you don't think that a 1% allocation can move into Bitcoin over a 10 year period, you know, you might as well give up at this point. There, there's, no, there's nothing here for you to see. The thinking that I'm putting forward, while it might be delivered in a parabolic way, the actual numbers underneath it are very, very conservative. I mean, um, just to put this into perspective, right? A 1% buy of total assets of just BlackRock and Fidelity, BlackRock would be a $100 billion buy, right? Just from BlackRock. They got 10 trillion on the management, a 1% allocation is $100 billion. Their, their ETF right now has 2 point something billion dollars in it. That's it. That is it. They've got a 0.02% allocation in Bitcoin right now based on their assets under management. And again, if you've got to start thinking a little bit more long term on this uh, and we have to start planning out where this is going to go into the future. Like if you're a real estate investor, you didn't get into property thinking, OK, next year I'm going to make a bunch of money. Sure, we can do that with Bitcoin. We can have some fun. We can talk about price targets that are going to come next week and next month and six months from now. But really, this is about the long term pivoting of capital that is moving, just like capital pivoted from somewhere else to ESG, we're now looking at capital pivoting from somewhere else to Bitcoin. So if we have a look at, you know, BlackRock, it would be a $100 billion buy. Fidelity's their assets under management is $4.5 trillion. Um, and so that would be a $45 billion buy. But their uh, assets under discretion is somewhere like $11, $11 trillion, right? So that's $130 billion. So $45 to $130 billion. So if we just look at the biggest numbers there, because that's what we're doing right now, uh, we're looking at a combined net cash inflow into Bitcoin of $230 billion over a period of, I don't know, five years, 10 years, something like that, right? And that's maybe over 1.5 to two cycles of Bitcoin. We're talking about this immense amount of cash being funneled in within a very short period of time. And just to put this into perspective, how crazy this is, I looking at every data I've looked at, it looks like the last run up of 2020, 2021 in Bitcoin was caused by $25 billion being poured into the market, including MicroStrategy and including Michael Saylor and everything that happened then. So you're looking at 10x the amount of purchasing coming just from two asset managers utilizing their ETF, right? And by the way, we can forget about anyone talking about allocating into crypto. And I'm not talking about, you know, morons on YouTube. I'm talking about like institutions because the SEC is taking care of that, uh, all of that garbage <laughs> with enough regulatory doubt that they've created, right? Um, and also the ETH ETF, I don't think is coming in 2024 based on what BlackRock's been saying, based, based on what the, uh, um, the SEC's been saying. I don't think that's coming in 2024. So there's one asset to allocate to, and that is Bitcoin. That is it from an institutional perspective. And I think they'll want a 1% allocation over a number of years. I messed up 2008. I completely and utterly screwed up 2008. It was my first ever equity and credit cycle. I didn't understand what the hell was going on. Uh, and I was scared out of the market. I completely messed it up. And yeah, I made money along the way, but I had to wait until 2020. 12 years I had to wait until I felt like I redeemed myself based on the cycle that happened in 2020. 
And I was lucky because along that way, I didn't give up. I prepared, I, I stayed ready, I made money, and I prepared that money to be executed the next time something like that came around, and it came around. So that $230 billion net inflow, this is, this is uh, an allocation of, of just um, today's assets, right? We're not including here uh, tomorrow's inflated values. We're not including any money that's printed. This is just today's AUM assets under management that we're looking at. We're not looking at the amount more money being printed. We're not looking at asset values going up, et cetera, et cetera. And using the bull market multiplier from Bank of America that I've been talking about, uh, which is one to 118, a dollar in equals $118 increase in market cap, um, which by the way, I believe climbs as Bitcoin comes off exchanges and these acute shocks start happening. You're looking at a total market capitalization over 1.5 to 2 cycles of $27.1 trillion, right? And what does that mean? That means with a fully issued supply, so ignoring all of the lost coins, ignoring all of that, you're looking at a price of $1.29 million per Bitcoin, right? If that $230 billion finds its way into that. And by the way, this is, the, this is only the ETF buying funnel. You've got to think about it. Bitcoin is here, right? There's all these funnels of purchasing going on. There's like the hodlers, right? Then there's like the companies that need Bitcoin. Then there's like the companies that will, you know, treasury Bitcoin. Then there's, you know, people that are using Bitcoin for services. Then there's ETFs. ETFs just one funnel. And that one funnel could be $230 billion over the next cycle and a half to two cycles, right? We're not including, you know, retail, corporate, governmental self-custody. We're not including derivative speculators. You know, that's a huge one that no one's even speaking about yet. Derivative speculation will be the topic for the next cycle. Right now, it's not that relevant because the markets haven't developed yet. But who knows? It could become relevant very quickly. But derivative speculation, because you could have a billion dollars in net assets and $20 billion speculating on it. And that is a huge amount of money that, that will come to Bitcoin from the derivative side. And then, by the way, I'm also not mentioning that we're talking about a 1% allocation. What happens if they go, we need 2%? This, all of this doubles, right? And that's at today's values. We're also not looking at new entrants like Charles Schwab, which could add another $90 billion to this buying demand just from these top, top two asset managers, right? There's so much cash coming into this asset that has absolute finality of supply and a current active available supply today of maybe 1.8 million coins on exchanges. Right. By the way, hodl rates are going to climb because now you've got an ETF, so you've got tax structures, right? So you're not just, you know, you have options now because with the ETF, you can choose to put it in a tax deferred account or you might be in a situation where you have to hold the asset or you might be in a situation where now because you can actually generate financial liquidity and, and start using the financial rails of Bitcoin, uh, sorry, put Bitcoin on the financial rails, you don't even need to sell your Bitcoin to generate liquidity. You're also looking at the fact that the buyer is different, right? The buyer is not looking to speculate. The buyer is looking to hold. So, you know, we're looking at hodl rates going up. We're looking at you know, supply of Bitcoin going down, the halving's coming in 76 days. You're looking at the supply uh, going down to 450 Bitcoin a day. But basically, the point of this video is to let you know that January is fucking over already. January is over. And I'm so proud of all of the people who have messaged me, whether you come from a poor background, whether you come from a rich background, whether you come from, you know, um, a background that understood Bitcoin, understood tech, or whether you come from a background that was more real estate, gold, whatever. And the amount of people that have messaged me to say they got to a minimum of one Bitcoin. And of course, depending on your wealth amount, some people got to a lot more than that. And again, we're looking at a $230 billion pipeline that's opened up with just two of the top five asset managers in the United States here. So we got to stop fucking around. And it's now time. If you haven't got yourself positioned to your one Bitcoin, you had a lucky break with the sell the news event that happened with the ETFs, it's drawn the price down. Now is the time to get your position because there is not a way in hell that I can see. I can't see Bitcoin sitting at less than $100,000 by the end of 2024. I can't see that. Remember, we scooped past 69,000 the previous high. 
it's all clear skies to 100,000. Then you got these ETFs, you know, scooping up a couple thousand Bitcoin, a thousand, two thousand Bitcoin a day, just one pipeline, not including, not, you know, not including the fact that the supply is going to go down by half in three months, not including the fact that Jerome Powell just did his conference and he's sounding dovish, not including any of these other bullish, uh, you know, stimulants that are coming into the market, right? The market is about to shift. It's about to step change on you right now, and you've got to be positioned. If you're not positioned, time is running out here. But ultimately, with all of this demand coming in, with BlackRock, with Fidelity playing the games that they play, there are still always only three rules to Bitcoin. Step number one, you buy Bitcoin. Step number two, shut the f up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy.